Oh, well, uh, it was a long time ago. When you get to 50 years of age, you, you don't remember that well, but it was such an important um, period in my life. Um, that I was here at QPR as a, as a young player, and I was probably struggling to, to get into the first team. So, you know, I'd maybe be on the bench or, or I'd travel with the team and, and not play. And um, the manager at the QPR at the time was a fellow called Jim Smith, who, um, who knew Gordon Mill very well. Um, through the years of them managing against each other. Um, and Gordon Mill said he was looking for a centre forward um, that he felt might be able to come to Turkey and he, he felt the team were close to winning the championship and if he could find a centre forward that could score some goals and maybe they would have a chance of winning the championship. So Jim Smith suggested me um, and spoke to me about it and then um, Gordon flew over from, from Istanbul to, to speak to me. Uh, I like what he had to say and I thought it would be a, a really good challenge for me. I think for me, um, you know, when I left, uh, before I left to, to go to Turkey, the only thing I knew about Turkey as a, as a young boy was I'd seen the film Midnight Express. So I was, uh, I was obviously a bit skeptical, um, but what I wanted to do was I, I realized I was going to a different culture. Um, and I wanted to say, well, OK, I didn't want to go to Turkey and go, well, oh, this is not like England, this is not like England. I just wanted to immerse myself in wh where I was going to. And from the very first day I arrived at the airport, when I came out, there was photographers, there were people, there was, and I was thinking, I was looking around thinking, who are they here for? It can't be for me because I'm a, I'm a player, I'm a young player that's just come out of QBRs, I'm still in QBRs reserves. And there was such a big uh, furore that I was like, wow, this is incredible. And then the first day I got to Turkey, I went to a hotel. I met the Bashkan, uh, Suleiman Sabah at the time, the late Suleiman Sabah, I met the Bashkan. And I met some other board members. And then Gordon Mill said to me, oh, we have a, a training session today. Um, it's nothing big, we just a uh, training session. You go, you meet all the players. Uh, say hello and then we do a, a training session on the main pitch so you'll see the main pitch. So, oh, okay, yeah, this is, sounds good. <laughs> and then uh, I get down to Unana Stadium and there's 35,000 people waiting to watch the first um, training session. I said to Gordon, you said to me, this is a small training session. He said, oh yeah, this is, this is, this is it. This is the first session. So the one thing um, I came away from that first training session thinking, wow, in England we say football is our national sport and we're very, really passionate, but I've never ever seen anything like this. It was incredible. Soraya is, was for me the, the heartbeat of the football club. You know, there's, in the body there's so many different components, but there's, there's one heartbeat that makes everything function. And he was for me the heartbeat of the football club because he had to make sure that every one of those, every single player had what they needed. Not only did he have to make sure they had what they needed, he had to make sure the management and all the coaching staff and everything had what they needed. And he was a constant. He was always at that. He was always at the football club. No matter what time of day you went there, what you was looking for, he was always there and he would always find it for you. So, um, I realised very early that he was a real important part of what went on at the football club. And perhaps back then, people really didn't realise the significance of the, the, the Soraya at, um, at the football club. You know, obviously he, I, I couldn't speak Turkish, he couldn't speak English when, I first, when, we, when we first met. But straight away, um, I could see he was, he, you know, I had the, the goalkeeper, Radi Zalad, who uh, was who would do the, the, the interpreting for us. And we had an, a guy called Ali as well, who, who was an interpreter. And he said to me, you know, Soraya said, anything I need, just tell him, give him my boots and this, that and the other. And he, will, he, would, um, he would make sure everything was okay. Um, so from day one, there was a, a, there was a there, there was respect for each other. And that respect grew into, what I, I, I sometimes call love. It was, atmosphere in the change rooms was, uh, it was a good atmosphere. I knew, I knew I'd come to a good team. Um, the team spirit was, was excellent. 
everybody seemed to get on with everybody, even the players that, that didn't play on a regular basis. Um, everyone seemed to pull together and um, there was always a, a good atmosphere and obviously I couldn't always understand what was going on. So they could have been taking the mickey out of me and I was laughing as well because I didn't realise what they was doing. But um, to be honest, it was, uh, yeah, it, was a, it was a good atmosphere. A lot of young players um, with a hunger to want to do well and, and, and to achieve. So um, it was a great, great, great atmosphere. And, and like I said, you know, some of the boys would take the mickey out of Soraya. He would take the mickey out of some of the players. So it was, all, it was, it was, a, nice, it was a nice atmosphere. Yeah, I would, I would totally agree with that. Um, he was always positive. He was always lively. Um, and like I said, he was, he was always, he, he, he just made sure everybody was okay. Um, everybody, he cared about everybody else before he cared about himself. And that was, um, you know, that's a, that's a real unique quality. I think it was, um, you know, when, when, when somebody's ill and, you know, I, I lived on my own and, and, I, and I know sometimes, you know, when you're by yourself and, and like I said, he was, he's such an important part of the, of the football club. And it, it was just something that you did, you did for people. That, that's, that's how I felt, you know, I just wanted to make sure that he was okay. If he needed anything, if I could help, then I, would, I was willing to help. And so I got his information um, and uh, my mate Raddy Zalad, uh, we jumped in the car and we went to see him and made sure he was okay. I think the, the kit man and, 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 and um, you know, Sarah, they are the heartbeat of the football club. They tend to, people tend to come and go. They tend to stay for a long, long time. And as I said, they're the heartbeat, they're the ones that, they, they make sure that everybody's okay. They make sure that everything's okay. You turn up to a game on, 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 a, on a Saturday or a Sunday and you want to make sure that you've got the right football boots, the right this, the right that, and it's his job. And when you think he's doing that for, you know, nowadays he's doing it for 20, 30, 20, 20 odd individuals each game, making sure everyone individually has got everything that they need, um, that's, quite, that's quite special and quite demanding as well. Well, um, you know, I often say to people that, you know, for me, I came into professional football very late. I came in at 19. And then a couple of years later, I found myself in Turkey at Besiktas. And I say, you know, it was like my footballing apprenticeship. It really taught me how to be a professional. Uh, being at, at, at Besiktas uh, taught me how to be a professional footballer, taught me how to be a man as well, because for the first time in my life, I'd gone away from home. I was living on my own. I was taking care of myself. Um, I had no girlfriend with me, uh, no family, just me on my own. So I grew up as a man. So, you know, Besiktas in Turkey was a real important part in my life, not just my footballing career, but in my life. And um, will always, always remain a real special part of um, what, what's happened to me in this football game. I think it's a real, real good thing um, because, like I said, sometimes Sereas uh, go unnoticed because people say don't even know who they are a lot of the time. Um, so for them to be, for this Sereas to be recognised um, for the important part of what goes on at, at Besiktas Football Club and what goes on at lots of football clubs, I think it's really good um, and, and credit, that's well overdue. <laughs> That's the only good thing about being a Sarah, you can go on and on and on and on. You know, as a player, um, retirement comes to you at some stage and um, you, have to, you have to watch from the sidelines. Um, and obviously every time I, I keep a close eye on what happens with Besiktas and to see them win consistent back-to-back -back, um, championships is always good. Um, I've got a few Turkish friends over here who unfortunately support teams like Galatasaray and Fenerbahce. So whenever I see him, I always in big Besiktas, Baska I say to them. So um, you know, I still have some good, uh, good um, camaraderie with these guys. Back in the day, when I when I when I played there, you know, I had uh, I used to get on real with you know Ali, uh, there was uh, Metin, Gokan. I used to get on well with Gokan. Um, yeah, there was um, Zeki. Remember Zeki. Fayaz, core, you know, uh, Riza, the captain, who I, now, I saw Riza last year because 
I've seen Ariza a few times because he's done he's he's done his pro licenses and everything else, and he's done a few visits to to the UK, um, and I've done my pro license, so we met along the way. So I've met Reza a few times. Um, I know he's a he, he's a manager now, and he's done well. And you know, sometimes when you when you when you work with a when you work with a team and you work with a player, you know that they're going to go and be a manager. Reza, you always knew he was going to go and be a manager at some stage, you know. So I'm I'm really pleased for him. So yeah, uh, Ulvi, I remember Ulvi. Wow, um, Beerman. There's we had a player called Beerman, and um, me and Beerman used to. Um, Although Birmen didn't play a lot in the team when I was there, um, we used to have some, some good fun. We had uh, some good, uh, good banter when I was there.